What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Trey Jones. Today I'm gonna to be giving you 10 places that gave me anxiety. Go ahead and smash the like button down below if you're ready to kick anxiety in the butt. Leave me a comment down there as well. Today's question of the day, what are some of the places that gave you the most anxiety? You could relate with somebody, leave that down below in the comment section. I'll be picking two people to give a shout out to. I have two shout outs to give out today. Corey Beth McKnight, thank you so much for being proactive, answering last video's question of the day. And Brian Jacob, thank you for commenting on a lot of my videos. And also, you are a coaching client of mine, so thank you for trusting me and seeing the value in that and, and signing up for that. So guys, if you are interested with coaching one-on-one -on -one with me in depth, you also get a personalized strategy, a week of email support, my book, Anxiety Symptoms Explained. The email to contact me will be in the description and in the first pinned comment. So email me and we'll set that up. So guys, I wanna jump right into this. These are just some of the places that I had anxiety. I pretty much had anxiety everywhere you could imagine. If there was a place for me to go, I probably had anxiety there, okay? But this is some of the places that really spiked it, okay? And you'll see a common theme with a lot of these. The first one, guys, is being in a vehicle, okay? Whether I was driving or the passenger, didn't really matter. I would have anxiety for different reasons. If I was driving, I was afraid that I was gonna have a heart attack while I was driving, I was gonna sort off the road kill myself, hurt somebody else, and then people are gonna think that I was trying to take my own life, and or people are gonna think I was trying to take my own life and go out with a bang and hurt somebody else. Um, if I was out of town, you know, traveling far, I was afraid that I was gonna be too far away for an ambulance to get to me in time. Um, this would really affect me whenever I was trying to hold down a job. I would get there late. Um, I would have to pull over on the side of the road, do jumping jacks, run in place, do push-ups, douse myself with my uniform on with cold water to snap myself out of these panic attacks to allow me to get to work. Um, it was just terrible. My chest would start hurting and this is just an association uh, you know, with fear and with panic that I developed over time. Many of you will develop this after dealing with this for a while, eventually driving something that never used to be an issue for you is now an issue. Being a passenger um, was almost worse because I had to kind of just suck it up and be quiet and try not to um, you know, be erratic or, or command them to pull over. But there were a couple instances where I did have to tell two different friends to pull over and let me out because I felt like I was about to die and couldn't breathe. And I know that they kind of looked at me with concern. Luckily, they were my friends, so they kind of understood. But I, it was something that was just really embarrassing for me and I, and I really hated to have to tell them to pull over. Um, I just didn't like it. And then them looking at me with concern made things much, much worse. So being a passenger was bad as well. Sinking into the back of my seat while they're talking to me and my anxiety is just getting higher and higher and higher. I could do a whole video just on this. The next one, guys, is movie theaters. Okay, I used to love going to the movies as a kid, as a teenager, even as a young adult, but when my anxiety hit, for whatever reason, um, being in a movie theater really spiked my anxiety. I think a lot of it had to do with the loud noises, the loud sounds. I was very jumpy, okay? Um, believe it or not, um, I was just always like getting shocked by things. Like I was easily startled, so honking, uh, you know, any type of sirens or horns, slamming doors, somebody coming up behind me and spooking me, that stuff kind of irritated me. So the loud noises in the, in the theater didn't help. Also being kind of squeezed in, once again, you see the thing with these, I'm kind of squeezed in between people. It's not easy for me to get out. You know, if I feel like I'm having a panic attack, it's not easy, so I mean, it's not easy to get back in. Um, so that would stress me out. And also it was just dark where I couldn't see much going on around me. Um, and the darkness, believe it or not, that added to my anxiety. That's why I had a lot of bad anxiety at night. So, again, something that used to be so fun for me that I just felt like I couldn't do anymore, and that was going to the movies and, and seeing a good movie. So um, that was something I started to avoid. Um, the next one, guys, is classroom or being in school. Now, I did drop out of college the first time around when my, uh, right before my first panic attack. Uh, it was actually one of the things I think led to my panic disorder and, and my health anxiety was just some adversity I was going through. It was a choice by me. I was just drinking way too much and partying and I, and I stopped going to class, which is ironic because I was an honor student before. Um, but I decided to give it another go during the time that I had anxiety and go back to some community college, you know, try to get some credits built up. And I did that for a semester and then I stopped because just being in the classroom, my anxiety would go up. Um, I'm not sure what it was. I think it's just because I was pressured to be there. Any place where I was obligated to be and to stay in, I would stress because I was fearing that I was gonna have a panic attack that would make me leave. So yeah, I dealt with that. When it came to testing on the computers and stuff like that, my anxiety would get high. Not necessarily because I felt pressured to take the test, but I couldn't just get up and leave once again and come back. You have to do it all in one sitting. So that pressure by itself just made me flip. So. 
that lasted a short semester. Good news is, is later after I've dealt with my anxiety, I did go back and get a degree. So um, that, that's old news now. The next one is a hospital or doctor's office. I know many of you, many of you can relate with this one. I had white coat syndrome. So whenever I would go into the doctors or the ER to get checked, my numbers would go through the roof much, much higher than what they were probably before I went in. Um, but I was the guy at the beginning that even though I was terrified that something was wrong with me, I was terrified to go to the doctor and then say something was wrong with me. So um, any hospital where I saw sick people, people that were in pain, people that were coming in for heart attacks or cancer patients, like it would flip me out. Um, it would just trigger me. Doctor's office, the same thing, having to go get a test done or anything. Um, my anxiety was high on the way there and it was high there. Um, I know many of you can relate with that. Some of you, the doctor's office or the hospital is a comfort zone. Um, I wasn't one of those people. <laughs> um, the next one is elevators. Another thing that I used to think was pretty cool whenever I was younger, getting on an elevator, you know? Um, I like the weird feeling that you felt in your stomach whenever it would go up or go down. Um, that just stressed me out and it actually made me feel nauseous whenever I was going through my anxiety. And don't get me started on being packed in an elevator like sardines or Vienna sausages. Um, that's how I felt. I felt like stressed out, packed in there. Just hurry, please get to my floor so I can get out of here. Like almost wanting to get out on the floor that I don't even need to be on and just maybe take some stairs. I don't know what it was about elevators, uh, but I think it's just being compacted. Once again, the theme of a lot of these. Number six is grocery stores. I didn't like going to grocery stores, uh, especially Walmart. If Even if you're not an anxious person, like going to Walmart or a, a very busy uh, market store or whatever, grocery store, surplus store, whatever kind of store you're going to, um, it's gonna be stressful, especially when it's busy. You're playing that game, which way you're going, um, trying to get into an aisle and somebody's literally standing there forever, taking forever to pick out either white or brown rice, you know, and they're making it a life decision. Um, I just had very little patience for this stuff back then. So I, not having patience and having anxiety at the same time and going to a grocery store is bad news. Also, you go into a grocery store, I, like me, um, I would be looking for an exit. You know, I didn't want to get too far away from an exit in case I had to like bail my car and go out because I had an anxiety attack. Um, also, while I was at grocery stores, I would always check my blood pressure. Um, I know it sounds silly, but I would check my blood pressure and of course, worrying that I was going to get a high score, I would get a high score while I was there and then all I could think about the rest of the time I'm at the grocery store is, oh my God, I have a heart problem because my blood pressure is high, even though I have white coat syndrome um, and it would be much higher than what it really was, I would kind of sabotage myself there as well. Um, and also the lines associated with grocery stores are horrible, but I'll get to that in a second. The next one is long lines. Long lines in general would make my anxiety go high. Why? I mean, it makes sense, right? You're in a long line and you probably have been there for a while. By the time your anxiety starts to rise up, you've probably been there for a little bit. So it's like, do I get out of line and waste all this time, you know, to either check out or maybe you're at the DMV or uh, in line to get a movie ticket or whatever, or an amusement park, whatever the case may be. Do you get out of line and just not go through with it because you can't deal with it um, or and have to start all the way over or do you just suck it up and be really anxious by the time you get your ticket you're like shaking <laughs> so long lines my chest would just start to hurt i know it sounds ridiculous but um, that's how bad of a state i was in um, number eight the workplace i've mentioned many times that i was a job hopper okay which means i didn't stay very long at many of my jobs so future employees watching this um, take it with a grain of salt because I'm not this way anymore, but um, at the time guys like it was very hard for me to hold this down Anxiety was very tough. I mentioned the driving thing made my uh, you know getting to work impossible some days um, at, at least on time especially if my job was out of town um, but also like I, I had some really good jobs that I kind of just crapped out on. I didn't show back up. I just quit out of nowhere. And that was because I couldn't handle it mentally. I had too much going on at the moment. The best job I had was a general manager job of a sporting goods store. General manager, right? In control of all this stuff at the age of 21. An amazing opportunity. I loved my job. I freaking loved it. Uh, the days that I could actually get there, right? Um, but even that wasn't the biggest problem. I was having panic attacks at work. Even though I loved my job, um, I just had horrible health anxiety. So I was always in my symptoms. And I knew the day that like, I, I finally had had enough, there was this huge uh, shoe sale that we were having and a, a customer came up to me and was like, do you have a size in this such and such and such and such? And I remember sitting there and she's like talking and right in the middle of her talking, I just turned around and just went to the back room. I told my assistant manager, I was like, you're, you're gonna have to take over. I apologize so much, but I feel like I'm having a heart attack. 
which is the normal for me at that time. I thought I was having a heart attack every day. Um, but this one apparently was the real one. And I told her, like, just take over for me. For me. I got to go to the hospital. I don't feel good. And just tell her that I, I said, I'm sorry that I, I'm not feeling good. She's like, okay, I'll, I got it or whatever. So I go, you know, to the hospital, go get all these tests done. Turns out I'm fine. But eventually I quit that job because I, I couldn't keep doing it. I couldn't keep doing it. And the driving was exhausting. Um, so I needed something closer. So that happened over and over again. That was kind of the theme of my life at the time, unfortunately. I know many of you can relate. Some of you are actually on disability for your anxiety. So uh, number nine is parties and gatherings, something that I used to love to do, and not necessarily the healthiest thing to do to be partying all the time, but uh, you know, I had to change a lot with my anxiety, and part of it was I couldn't go to parties anymore. I felt paranoid all the time. Um, like I said, I was always jumpy, so people were that drunk that would come to me like, man, what's up, you know? Like that stuff would irritate me. Um, and I was more of an irritated and angry person at that time. So alcohol, parties, anger, that just doesn't make. So I just would have put myself in those situations. Um, so that would just give me some anxiety. The loudness, the immaturity. Um, I, I, was trying to, I was kind of in a transition at that time. So um, in gatherings, just gatherings in general, around family, family events. I love those things. Um, I just couldn't do that stuff anymore. Um, it, I could do it. I could get myself through it with, with family. Um, but it was a struggle. Okay, just sitting on the couch, you know, on Thanksgiving and everybody's having a good time and then everybody starts asking questions. What are you doing with your life? Um, oh, you quit that job too. You know, you know how families are and they can kind of hound you. What's this stress thing you got going on, you know? Um, so just feeling pressure to answer questions and live up to people's expectations and family gatherings. I could do a whole other video about that as well. Coming up with some good video ideas during this video. That's awesome. Number 10, believe it or not, my bed. Okay, and I think this is another association that I developed. I associated my beer, my beer, my bed <laughs> with panic and uh, just a lot of anxiety symptoms because at nighttime, that's when my symptoms would flare up. Um, so panic attacks, I had tons of them at night in my bed. When I would get into bed, I'm laying there, I'm still, and I'm like listening for symptoms, like even listening for them. <laughs> you can't hear them, right? But I'm listening for something to pop off. Um, any bubble, any gurgle, um, any slightest sensation, any kind of, kind of twinge or spasm or twitch or, or pain, I felt it tenfold. I was very hyper-focused, very hyper-aware, hyper-sensitive, and um, I associated my bed with this. So kind of just even pulling the covers over me well, was like a trigger. I know it sounds crazy, but I didn't get much sleep during this uh, time of my life. Um, and when I did get sleep, it wasn't very good quality. Um, so that definitely didn't help me with my next day. So guys, if you're going through this stuff and you're dealing with this in, in these different places, the idea is to gradually expose yourself to these places. You can't keep running from them. I couldn't keep running from my bed. I couldn't keep running from the doctor, um, school. I, I had to drive right to hold a job. I couldn't keep quitting my job. I couldn't keep getting out of line or not going to grocery stores. I eventually had to do these things. All right, so please don't avoid these things because whenever you avoid them, you're telling your subconscious, like, look, I can't handle it. And your subconscious will be like, all right, cool. Yeah, well, we're not changing. You know, I'm gonna keep on throwing these fears and these symptoms at you whenever you show up to these places. That's how triggers stay the same. You gotta break that cycle. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of bravery. Um, and again, like it's, it's a long process. I can go in depth with you. Um, that's why I do my coaching. Um, there's just so much I can, I can explain on these videos. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're eventually gonna have to expose yourself to those fears. Once I started going back to these places and not letting anxiety run my life as far as where I went and what I did, recovery became a lot much easier. You know, the momentum really got going. The snowball was gaining some momentum as it went down the hill. So I encourage you guys to get back out there and to do the things that you love, especially things you love. You know, work is one thing, but you know, hobbies, like things like going to the movies. And I used to love to drive and I used to love social gatherings. and. I couldn't do those things anymore because of my anxiety, or at least I thought I could, all right? But you do have some choices to make with this. But guys, I love you. My tips for anxiety are down below. Remember, if you wanna do anxiety coaching with me, in the description and in the first pinned comment, my email, hit me up. We'll see if we can get something set up. Um, again, more resources, online therapy is down below in the description as well. It's cheaper than in-person therapy. You can do it on the phone, the laptop, the PC. You don't even have to leave your house. So um, if you haven't ever talked to a professional, which I encourage you to do, there's a link down there for that as well. Remember, my social media, my Snapchat, my Twitter, my Instagram, the Facebook groups are down below as well. Please do that. I'm now on BitChute, so it's a backup channel in case something were to happen to this. So go to BitChute and subscribe to Trey Jones. I'll be there as well. Um, 
something else. Subscribe, yeah, probably one of the more important things. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell so you get updates when I put these videos out. And like this video if you got value. Remember, if you want a shout out, answer today's question of the day. What was that question? Give me some places that gave you or are giving you the most anxiety, all right? The point is you can relate with somebody, maybe get a conversation started, learn something about some of the subscribers that are involved with this community, and it just gets the conversation and engagement going, and I love that. So thank you guys for watching and being patient. You know, if you made it this far, say, hey, I made it, Trey. I appreciate that, you know? Thank you for watching the whole thing. I can ramble for a while. But thank you for coming here and watching my videos. It means the freaking world to me. This wouldn't be possible without you guys. Um, and I'm gonna keep bringing it to you. I didn't have any videos the past few days because it was the holidays. I didn't really wanna waste content and put it on here for it not to get any views from y'all. Um, so we're back on regular schedule until Christmas, obviously. So thank you guys, and until next time, keep fighting.